Hello everyone, Trisha A, it's me, Jenny. It's time for another Not Naked video as well. Trisha, 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 Naked Truth 2.0! Um, and yeah, um, so, Naked Truths, tools for the vloggers to be vulnerable and honest and get away from the expectations of society. Uh, most people choose to, or some people choose to do naked, I choose not to, um, but either way, it's not about nudity, it's not about 60 times, it's about the nudity or the, um, uh, dressing down to make the vlogger feel vulnerable and honest in the same way that like Hot Wings isn't a colour new show, uh, The Naked Truth is not a naked time show, it's a tool for the person on camera to feel vulnerable and honest. Um, and yeah, first take, one take, all that jazz, and this is going to be a nice long video because it's my first actual response to a proper official Naked Truth 2.0, which I didn't realise until I was watching it the second time, like, there is so much stuff that was brought up in that video that um, spans a lot of things, um, and when it's a naturally a longer video hiccup, blimey, great way to start, uh, naturally a longer video because it's live and it's streamed. But also you have the responses to conversations, my responses are going to become longer because that's a thing. Um, so I, I even made notes, I, I don't usually make notes because it's meant to be all like off the cuff, but I, I made notes so I didn't forget anything I wanted to talk about today. Um, so yeah, um, so I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible, but there's a lot of stuff that was happened, was discussed and that I found really interesting and a lot of feedback from the commenters and stuff that I was like, that's really cool, that's really interesting too. Um, so yeah, um, so Trisha was talking about the fact that um, people have been making comments on her breast size, um, specifically the fact that it's reduced um, and the fact that um, people seemingly think she's got a official reduction um, when it's just a natural thing that's happened with post-pregnancy. Um, and um, that brought up a lot of subjects, um, some stuff that we've covered in previous Naked Truths, like I think we kind of covered some of the stuff to do with odd bodies, we covered some of the concepts with... Um, I can't remember, I made notes, I made notes, I made notes. Um, spots, um, pregnancy, the results of that. Um, uh, I think she's talked about boobs in the past. Um, there's a lot of stuff that have, we've kind of talked about um, in previous Naked Truths that kind of came up again in an interesting way. So yeah, I'm going to start from the top and work myself down my, my massive kind of spidergram of things. Um, so she started off with um, self-esteem on the internet. Um, and kind of made the interesting point that, um, so a lot of the times when a vlogger is bringing up a subject that someone else has commented on, um, it's not necessarily from a defensive standpoint, um, and that's something that's kind of, uh, something that I've thought about a lot, where, um, you know, you've, you never feed the trolls, you don't want to give more attention to people who have a, a negative thing than the people who are a positive influence on your vlogging thing. Um, but also, just because someone has brought up a subject and you want to also discuss that subject doesn't necessarily mean you're like, I'm super defensive about it. Um, and a lot of the times, like, for me, I've been really lucky with my audience and you guys are amazing and you guys apparently like when I ramble on forever and ever, which is amazing and I would never give that up for the world. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that, um, just because you guys brought up a subject and I'm thinking about a subject doesn't necessarily mean that I'm like offended by the discussion, I just want to put my input into it. Um, so that was one of the things she brought up. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, yeah, I think it just some sometimes things need discussing even if it's not like from a um, an emotionally hurt place. So, you know, discussing, um, you know, body image as a concept and from a personal perspective versus um, being on the defensive is a very different thing and sometimes things just need to be talked about uh, which I thought was interesting to bring up. Um, so she also wanted her opinions on weight, uh, being fat too skinny shaming, um, yeah that's something that um, something that happens a lot um, and the one you hear most often about is fat shaming, uh, people saying oh you're so fat, blah 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 blah, but you can't win. Um, every body type is different and everyone has different preferences about it. If you are too fat you get something, if you get too skinny you're something else. Um, you cannot win in that situation, there is no winning people's personal opinion on your aesthetics. Uh, because everyone has different preferences, everyone has different perceptions, um, and you know, particularly change is scary. People find change very scary and I'm, you know, I'm not not a person so I, I sometimes find change scary. And so when you see it in someone else, um, that can be quite scary um, and quite alarming and that's part of the reason why people make so many comments about it, whether it's positive or negative, um, commenting on someone's opinion when you don't really know how they feel about it um, can be kind of a nerve-wracking experience. So things like 
congratulations you lost so much weight when someone they might be ill and they haven't told you or oh god you're gaining weight and someone might be ill and they haven't told you um you know stress eating or stressed fasting is a thing that hundreds of people go through and you don't really know whether or not someone's body changing is something that they actively have control over or not something that they've aimed to do um things like when when someone dyes their hair red i'll be like wow your hair looks amazing because i know that that's an active choice on their behalf to do something for themselves um but sometimes unless they actively come up to you and say hey look i've lost so much weight maybe don't bring up someone's weight gain or loss without kind of without them initiating it because a lot of the time people are very self-conscious about things and unless they're talking about it doesn't necessarily mean they want to talk about it um and yeah there is no winning um i have quite a few friends um myself and um i can at least think one other person that i know who has an internet life who has been you know the comments like, oh you're so skinny you're so you're so gross um you know eat a sandwich um and i've always had a rocking metabolism and i know that's uh, again people who have problems with weight in the opposite direction i know that must be horrible for people like me who are like oh you want grass is always greener um and i'm contented with my body weight and i eat a lot um when it comes to high metabolism it's something that i've always had i've always eaten like a ferret um and they're, they're, i've been a, a bit podgy in my life um never enough to be worrisome but there were times in my life when i you know i've never been skinny so th there's a very specific line for me i have never been skinny i've always you know um the parts of me that are meant to be larger are larger the parts of me that are meant to be bigger are bigger and i've never not eaten ever i have always eaten what's on my plate um so I've, I've never been like there are people that you look at and who are naturally stick insects in a good way in a healthy way like i grew up um idolizing ballet dancers i grew up looking at that particular body shape and being wowed by it not just because of its physicality it, it's it's like aesthetic but because of its physicality because of what ballet dancers bodies can do the athleticism and the strength and the flexibility that comes with that body type um not to say you can't have those skill sets without having that body type but that's the idealized version of that subtype um, and because I've never had that, I, there has been times in the past when I've thought, oh god, I'm really fat because I'm not, I've not got that ballet dancer aesthetic. Um, and, yeah, I've forgotten what my point was. Um, but yeah, because people who think that I'm not eating because I'm naturally thin, um, that's sometimes one of those things that makes me slightly uncomfortable. But again, you get the opposite problem on the other side of the spectrum. Um, and I've brought in a couple of things on my things. Um, but yeah, my metabolism has changed. And it, again, one of the things I talked about, change is scary. Um, so, uh, when I was, um, teenage, um, and younger, I ate. And I ate and I ate and I ate. And I loved it. I love that feeling of being so full and it's just like that kind of full, happy, fat feeling. Now I've ate too much. I get so much pain like physical pain um and like i've had a couple of like i think when i went to america i finished every single one of these american portions which were quite large and i ate i finished what's on my plate that's what how it was brought up i eat what's on my plate and i eat a varied diet um but in america it was mostly not particularly healthy food it was mostly diner food and at the end of those 10 days i was so ill i just like i, I didn't throw up or anything but i just lay in bed in agony because i'd eaten these meals that i i probably shouldn't have done um and ever since then my metabolism has dropped to the point where um i was in france re um, last year um and i'm not going to go into details my sister and my friend who were there found this absolutely hilarious and i found it completely mortifying but i overate and i ended up being sick um, which it wasn't bulimia, it was literally just filling myself up and then I couldn't eat anymore. Um, and I physically can't do that anymore. So uh, bodies change as you get older. I'm only, you know, I'm only 26, but when I was a teenager, when I was 16 years old, I could eat the same things and it would just feel good and now it feels horrible. Um, so yeah, um, that's a side thing. Um, da -da 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 -da. um again changes so one of the other notes i have is um bodies changing post birth um so there's a lot of things that change particularly I've, i think we talked about it on previously on one of the naked truths but um like women in particular their hormone cycles seriously physically psychologically change every part of your body um the the three primaries are of course um puberty um you know breeding um and menopause um but there are also stages in between and those like 
physically change your body like actively like they mess with your physical brain chemistry they mess with your metabolism they mess with how you digest it like everything changes organs rearrange themselves things are permanently changed on your body once you have given birth um forever um they don't pop back um so you know things happen um most the most common ones you get are the people who then have difficulty gain uh, losing weight um that is more common but you know things happen people are different um so yeah that it did it, it's still it's still horrifying um one of the things that I, I was talking to my sister and my sister is a doctor um, a medical doctor and she brought up um some of the stuff that she witnessed while doing gynae and um uh pregnancy and birth and all that stuff and some of her descriptions of what goes on um during a birth scenario um there were words such as tearing um and she described sounds of what it what physically doctors do in order to aid the process um things like helping with cesareans it's not a slice and dice it is a nip and a pull in order to do as little damage as possible it's more of a tear than it is a cut and I, I, I'm trying I'm trying to avoid being as graphic as she was but the graphic nature of childbirth is it is physically traumatizing psychologically traumatizing and every single person who has ever been born who has ever existed had to go had their mother go through that process and it is permanent and it is damaging and uh, one of the things she brought up a few my sister was talking to me a couple of like a few months ago was she was talking she was on the psych she was helping out with psychology um and old age dementia um and one of the things she said is there's a particular level of psychosis that you get with older women who have been matriarchs of families and who um didn't get aftercare psychologically post birth but they coped they did what they were meant to do they were matriarchs they were women who were brought up to be stiff upper lips in the 1940s uh, 1930s 1940s and they were brought up to always hold it together and at the point where you know their husbands have died or the point where they're they're not able to look after themselves and they get psychosis because they don't get the psychological aftercare you need because childbirth is traumatizing anyway sorry um i'm going off on a side note back to the boobs back to the boobs because that's more of a topic um yeah so uh da -da 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 not knowing what other people are going low weight porn da -da -da. positive negative uh um so when it comes to weight gain and loss um so Again, I I'm I'm very lucky. I I'm my body type is my body type, and I'm 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 relatively okay with that. I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a sec. Um, but when it comes to comments on my weight, I tend not to get too many on the internet because um, most of my commenters uh, tend to avoid subjects like that. Um, because as I said, they're very very amazing, wonderful, understanding people who kind of adhere to the comment I made earlier about you don't know what people are going through, so why would you comment on someone's appearance without them bringing without them broaching the subject? Um, the only time I really get fat shamed is by my mother, um, and she does it in like she she there is no ill intent. I be truly believe my mum does not mean to be ill intent when she makes bad jokes about me. Um, so uh, I think from from her perspective, her comments. So Trisha talked about um, other people commenting on her and it being from a good place, but coming off as wrong. Um, so mum has the yeah, she, she it's from such a good place, but it comes off really mean. Um, so one of the things she said uh, it was a couple of months ago, and um, I'll try and keep it as brief. Basically, she wanted to buy me jewellery. And I didn't think I deserved the jewellery. Um, and she made the comment that maybe you should, um, maybe you deserve the jewellery because you passed your driving test, and because you passed your driving test, you're going to get you're going to get so much fatter because you're not cycling, and maybe you need the jewellery to hide from your fat. Um, and then the other, in fact, this Saturday just gone, I got home. Sunday just gone, I got home from D and D, and I explained to her um, what I ate during while playing D and D, which was not healthy. Um, and she said, oh, you're going to get very plump pretty soon, aren't you? Um, and I think for her, it comes from a place of I am the only one in my family 
who doesn't worry about my weight. Um, my sisters have struggled with weight, my mum has struggled with weight. Um, my dad, I genuinely don't think he needs to worry, but he does worry about his weight. Um, and my mum knows that I don't worry about it, but also knows that I am not very healthy when it comes to what I eat. And I said, I have a very diet, I eat a good selection of food and I eat a lot, but I don't necessarily always eat the healthiest things. Um, and I am not that fit or athletic either. Um, so her, I think her comments come from a place of wanting to be healthier, not necessarily skinnier. Um, which is kind of the way that I, if I were to aim for a fitness goal, it wouldn't be because of aesthetics, it would be to do as much as I can physically. Um, and that's part of the reason why I idolise ballet dancers, not because of their size, but because of what they could do. Um, and that's kind of the body tape that I would really, really like. Um, when it comes to um, personal kind of comments about certain things and like rude comments about things, a lot of the time the comments that I have gotten about my body type are things that I care so little about that it's kind of funny to me. Um, so things like uh, uh, when someone comments about my weight, if they do. Um, I, I've, I've said it before in other Naked Truths, um, when it comes to my physical aesthetic, I'm a and my camera stopped filming. Yay! I think it's filming now. Yeah, okay, okay. So um, when I was, I was saying, um, when it comes to my physical aesthetic, I'm okay with it. Um, it's not great, it's not bad. Um, I have a saying that me and my sister have, which is, I'm um, still got a nose, uh, which sounds really weird out of context, but basically it means you know, uh, it could be worse. In in the history of the human race, me and my twin sister have reached 26 years old as females and not died, not being mauled, not being um, had any nasty, horrible diseases. Um, let's be grateful for what we have. We don't need to worry about the little things in life. We don't need to worry if I've got that spot on my face because I physically still have a face. Like, I have a face and I have four limbs and I have all my fingers and who who cares if my teeth are a bit wonky because I still have teeth like let's be glad of what we have um so when people make comments about my aesthetic or how I look on the internet um I don't care about aesthetics um most of my self-consciousness comes from my brain like I my brain does not work how I'd, I'd love to be much much smarter than I am I really would like that is a genuine insecurity of mine and I worry about how people perceive me not ever physically it's it's unless it's like clumsiness which I do worry about how people see me as clumsy but I worry about whether or not people think I'm a good boss I worry about whether or not people like me I worry about like how whether or not I've read the books that I ought to have read or I'm I'm like whether or not my brain works as fast or to or whether or not I've done the prep that I should have done for things um whether or not I should have done that other thing physically or like I have a lot of insecurities but very few of them are physical because in the end my body is my body and there's very little I can do about it um and again I don't wear makeup again my mum makes comments about maybe you should wear makeup um and I don't do that um because uh, she's like maybe you seem more professional or more old um, if you wear makeup and I'm like oh you know I don't want to have to get up any earlier um, to do makeup it's just I, I don't deem it a necessary thing for myself because I, I prefer sleep <laughs> um, uh, anyway uh, da -da 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 -da. let's go through um, there's one thing that um, I wanted to bring up as well god this is the this is the rambidious naked truth this is this is this is bad this is I'm sorry um, yeah um, one thing that I saw on Facebook a little while ago um, was um, it was like a picture of this old lady wearing this fantastic dress and it said um, the uh, 20 things that women over 40 should not should never wear and list 1 to 20 the weight of other people's expectations um, and I think that that's a good advice for anyone like the 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 only thing that you guys shouldn't do is try is is let other people influence who you are now that's not to say look after not look after yourself or not aspire to something that's better or healthier but you know just you be you and, and I'm sorry this is super cheesy so cheesy and so long-winded I'm sorry um, I'm hoping that the YouTube editor will help me with this edit because now I have to slice two videos together um, da -da 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 -da. um let's see um one thing I I, think, I can't remember if I brought up in Naked Truth um I aspire to uh, something that I say quite often and I don't know whether or not I've said it in any vlog but um I say the three H's of happiness of health of uh, beauty blah, 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 blah. 
Can you tell? I'm not good at vlogging today. It is very late. I have finished work. I'm tired. Um, three H's of beauty. Health, hygiene, happiness. And they're all umbrella terms. They're non-specific umbrella terms. It's just nice alliteration. So health comes down to physically are you healthy um, and there's a lot of things about health that you can't control but you know there are some things that you can things like how much you eat how much you drink how much you know do you look after the body that you have um, and there's some people who look after it to a different extent there's some people who are very very athletic but generally if you more or less look after yourself then that's a good way to start on the road to beauty um, hygiene so this is this is one of those things that you know, if even if you're not healthy, even if you're not whatever the third one, um, you can you can uh, you can show that you look after yourself. You can brush your teeth. You can brush your hair. You can wear makeup. You can you know you can do certain things that show that you physically care about you. Um, and I don't wear makeup, but you know I turn up to work and I care about how I present myself. I wash my face. I brush my teeth. I don't smell. Like not smelling is a big thing in beauty surprisingly um in my opinion um and the third one is happiness and that again it's an umbrella term it's non-specific it's just nicer alliteration but you know how you feel about you and how you present yourself to the world um you know not everyone is happy all the time happiness is as i said a non-official umbrella term but if you are a nice person and you go out into the world trying to make the world a better place then the way that you will be perceived by others is not going to be dictated by your appearance um, and you know these three feed into each other you can have a great personality and awful personal hygiene and still be perceived as beautiful you can have great personal hygiene and an awful personality and someone could still perceive you as beautiful you could be at death's door really ill but you turn up and you have brushed your teeth and your hair is clean and you're smiling and you're putting on your best self and that is beautiful um and those feed into each other but basically when it comes to god this is so so many tangents my god i didn't realize this was going to be this bad i'm so sorry um but when it comes to weight loss and weight gain um there are some stuff you can control and other stuff you can control in different ways if you can't control your weight fluctuation um then do other things like make make sure you always wear perfume and you know present your best self and be a nice human um ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. uh ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba um, one of the questions that was brought up was, um, have you ever had anything uh, big and physical happen to you that has been a big change and has made you um, different in some way, either outside or inside? Um, and I have not. Um, the closest I could think of was um, I, I went on birth control um, about two years ago uh, for medical reasons. Um, I think we've talked about periods before. Um, but I used to get very, very, very painful periods. I used to be off work with literally I, I would be physically ill. I'd throw up um, and I'd, I'd have to take off time from work because I would get hot and cold and feverish and I'd, I'd throw up consistently um for the first two to three days um and it, it, it took me out of work and it was heartbreaking and mortifying and genuinely embarrassing um that I'd, I'd i'd start off and i'd get to work and i'd feel okay and then the pain would hit and it would be so intensive um so i went on birth control to help control that um and it really really has helped but there's, there's horror stories you get about going on birth control about like weight loss and hair growth and hormonal fluctuations and stuff and i'm very very lucky that despite the fear of those changes Changes. so far I haven't experienced too much of that um, other than the fact that I have peace of mind which is lovely um, but yeah um, that, that's the thing that that's the only thing that I could think of that um, has gone into um, body changes uh, when it comes to um, surgery and I've, I've already talked about like physical changes you can do if you want to make yourself feel more beautiful you can there are things you can do both physically and non-physically uh, when it comes to surgery um, I feel like a lot of if if you can if there is a surgical solution to something that you like that you can consult with your doctor if in doubt if in doubt seek medical advice and not necessarily seek aesthetic physical I'm trying to like trying to put this in good words ah uh, so tired not good at words today um you know, I feel like there are psychological problems that can lead to overuse of surgery, but um, 
if in doubt consult your doctor and hopefully your doctor won't be there to make money and will be there to try and help you live the best life um, to try and do no harm um, and there are a lot of ways that surgery can be the best way of solving a problem in your life that then can be forever whether that's aesthetic or physical um, but if there's something that is very extreme um, that you feel like you need to do aesthetically um, then sometimes some people may need advice from um, a more psychological perspective than a physical perspective but that is not always the case and I'm trying to be very p diplomatic with this because I don't know how you're feeling you don't I, I, I cannot perceive how someone else is feeling at the time and if it is a solution that will help you live your best life then I would never ever criticize anyone for that um, da -da 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 -um. I think that's most of it oh my gosh um, so many notes so many notes um, I think I think that's all of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that was all of it. I've probably forgotten something that I was like, oh, I really wanted to talk about that, but um, this video has gone on way too long. The fact my camera told me to shut up is good enough advice for me. Thank you all for watching. Uh, feel free to comment. I'll put this in the Discord of Trisha's Discord. Um, sorry for the weird edit in the middle. My camera literally was just like, shut up, Jenny. Stop talking. Too much talking. Um, Next Naked Truth, I will not be doing a video response straight off the bat and I won't be able to mod uh, because I will be in Canada, doing Halloween in Canada. Um, so, uh, yes. Um, so I will do a, a video later on, um, but it will probably be quite late in the game because uh, I will be very jet lagged for a few days. Um, I'm hoping that I've covered everything and there wasn't anything that I'll think of as soon as I put this video together and be like, oh, I forgot to talk about blah de blah But um, I've definitely talked enough. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to comment and I'll see you guys all in three weeks-ish when there'll be lots of Canada videos. Yay Halloween! Thank you all for watching. Bye 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 bye.